Okay, so here I have a blank Espressif IDE project, and we'll start off by cloning the ESPIDF sensor and components library into the project folder right here. So let's go to the project folder and right click, then go to git bash here. Now let's grab the clone command. So just copy this line and then paste it into git bash and just let it finish. And now we can close it and let's check out the project folder. And there's a component we've cloned. All right, so let's go back and check the IDE. Then let's right click on the project folder and go down to refresh. And now the component is visible here as well. All right, so now we need to include this component into the project build by adjusting the top level C make list file, which is this one right here. So let's open it. And you need to add this line to the file. And you could put it just underneath the first include statement here, as I have. So I'll just give you a moment to type it. And there we're including the additional component as shown in the how to use section that we saw in the previous lesson. And what we're doing is quite similar to the instructions. We're just including this part here in the quotations, which is our path to the CMake list file to include the components folder. And once you've done that, you've successfully integrated the library into the project. But to see how to work with the examples included in this library, let's continue by going to the resource files I provided for this lesson. And we're going to drop those files into the main folder here. Okay, so within the resource files, what I've given you is the bme680sensor.c file, which is based on the main.c provided from the library. And the bme680 header file just contains a function prototype so that we can run the example from our main.c. And the CMake list file includes our source files into the build, and we'll replace our existing file here with it. And the kconfig project build file contains configuration defines and was also taken from the example. And this file will also replace our existing file here. And we'll also have an updated main.c. And this is the task common header file, which will update throughout the course to include all FreeRTOS task definition information, like the stack size, priority, and the core ID of the ESP32 that the task should run on. So just know that we'll make use of this file as we progress in the course, not just the current lesson. All right, so now let's select all of these files, and we can drag them over to the main folder. and then choose Copy Files, OK, and then select Overwrite All. And now let's check out the main CMake list file here. And there we have two source files listed that we need to build into the project, main.c and the bme680sensor.c. OK, and first, let's take a look at our main.c file. In our main.c, we have an include for the BME680 sensor header file, and including that gives us access to the BME680 task start function, which starts the example task. Okay, so let's check out this header file. And there we have the function prototype, which replaces what was in app main from the example. So let's go ahead and take a look. So we have this function definition here for the BME680 task start which is what we are calling from main.c. And here, the BME680 test task is created using the xTaskCreate pin to core API, which takes our definitions provided by the task common header file. And those definitions are for the BME680 task stack size, the task priority, and the core ID that the task should run on. So let's take a look at those. And there we have the stack size, priority, and core ID given by the example. OK, so I've kept all these values the same as what was provided by the example. OK, so let's go back. And now let's check out the BME680 FreeRTOS task, which is the function specified here. So again, this is from the example provided by the library. And I won't go into too much detail here because this isn't our code. But you can see that they've done some initializations for I2C communication. And then they've initialized the sensor. 
And then they've set the sampling rates for temperature, humidity, and pressure. And then set the IIR filter size for temperature and pressure. Then they've changed the heater profile and set the ambient temperature. Then they get the measurement duration. And in the while one loop, the measurement cycle is triggered with a reference to the sensor settings that were previously applied. So that gives you a general idea of how this works. The sensor is triggered based on those settings, and then we have a delay until the measurement results are available. And then we get the results from this values instance of the BME 680 values type def. So here we access values for the temperature, humidity, pressure, and gas resistance. Okay, and those are all accessible via the type def here. And the floating point sensor values are all here in the BME 680 header file from the library that we've integrated. Okay, so let's go back. And I'll just show you the other slight modifications I've made to this file. And that's at the top of the file. And there we have an include for our header file for our function prototype. And then we also have the task common to access our free RTOS definitions. And then we have these config example I2C definitions. And this one is for the sensor address. And then we have another here for the serial data line. And this one is for the serial clock. And these come from the kconfig project build file. So we'll go ahead and open that because this file enables us to set various options from the SDK config. So let's see how this works. And I'll open this with the C, C++ editor. And this kconfig file provides us with this example configuration menu option. And when we build the project using this kconfig file, the SDK config will then contain the menu configuration items that we see here. And this menu contains a choice for the example I2C address and the options for that. And there's also the example I2C master serial clock and serial data as well. Okay, so let's build the project and then we can view the config by going to project, then go to build all. And this may take a moment, so I'll go ahead and speed up the video now. And once it's done, Let's open the SDK config. So just double click on that. And the example configuration is right here, where we have the BME 680 I2C address options. And we have the GPIO numbers for the serial clock and the serial data as well. So that's how the SDK config and the kconfig project build file work together. And I've already made the connections to the BME 680 sensor based on the settings here. So now I'll go ahead and flash to my dev kit by going to launch and run mode. And again, I'll speed up the video. Okay, now that that's done, we can open a monitor and view those printf statements from the while loop. Here we can open a terminal. And there we have the values printed at the duration determined by the while loop. Okay, so that's all for this one. And now that you know how to integrate the ESPIDF lib, you now have an abundance of sensors and other components at your disposal. And I really hope you found this useful. And I'll see you in the next lesson.